a lot of people don't realize the the importance of an incident that happened in the 50s in Iran, where a, a more or less left-wing uh, prime minister by the name of Mossadegh was uh, elected, and uh, he nationalized the British oil interests in uh, Iran. And at first, he wasn't really... S- perceived as a as a communist threat, particularly by the Americans. I mean, th- there was a uh, feeling in the United States as well, maybe we could move in and take over Britain's oil interests. Um, but he soon became very close to the uh, two-day party, the Communist Party of Iran. And things did, in fact, start sliding to the left. And this was something that neither the British nor the Americans would tolerate. So they more or less, well, they instituted a coup, which resulted in the Shah um, taking over or reasserting his uh, royal prerogatives. And uh, there was actually, this was a lot of the coup was domestic in nature. Yes, the Americans and British provided direction. They provided money and organization and other things. But this guy, uh, Mossadegh, was actually thrown out by the Iranians, uh, both the monarchists and the, and the clerics. He was thrown out. And this is considered by the progressives in the West uh, to be original sin. Okay. When you have original sin, there's really no expiation. There's no way of uh, mitigating the culpability of, of, of the perpetrators apart from um, continuously apologizing for the sin. Uh, Barack Obama was However, actually- However, I must, I must interrupt you and ask, why is Iran treated differently when it comes to this this kind of thing because it's well known that the CIA has brought down something like 70 or 80 governments uh, across the world since its inception in 1947 I think CIA CIA was established uh, which is is quite a a number of governments that they've brought down Uh, no serious person would deny this so why, why is Iran so special? Why do they? Why are they mollycoddled? A lot of it, I think, has to do with the fact that America supported Mossadegh's successor, um, the Shah, to a tremendous um, degree, and his um, intelligence and uh, security service, Savak, were particularly nasty in maintaining the Shah's position in Iran. I didn't hear or see any complaints about this uh, during the uh, Carter administration until the end. And to understand why the United States in particular has this fixation with Iran, there are a couple of issues you have to bear in mind. Iran within the... um, corpus of of left-wing ideology figures prominently because the Shah, to one degree or another, was the policeman in the Gulf, America's policeman. And so it's seen as a a model of American neocolonialism. And so if if you can attack that model by any means possible, say, by bringing back uh, Khomeini from from his exile in France, then you're not really helping Iran. What you're doing is you're undermining American neocolonialism. It's kind of like a means and ends type thing. The Europeans have a much more transactional or economic attitude towards Iran, where they see a huge market, a a fairly well-educated number of people, and of course, oil and gas. And the US has less interest right now, they used to have more, but less now in Iran as uh, an economic prize, as, the, as far as we're concerned, 
in comparison to the Europeans. But as far as the left is concerned, um, you have Iran as a model of um, progressive resistance to American neocolonialism. And when you get people like Anthony Blinken and Jake Sullivan and their ilk and Malay, Robert Malay, for example, who was, I think it would be fair to say, uh, he had nothing more than uh, an Iranian spy within the administration. Um, you have these really naive, and I hate to say this, but stupid people who just don't understand the history or the of, of the region or the motives of countries like revolutionary Iran. You know, during the French Revolution, it was understood by most of the monarchies of the time that the um, disease of French republicanism represented a, a real threat to the, the system of monarchical control within Europe. And they were, they were constantly at war with revolutionary France to keep the contagion in, in France. Well, here you have a Muslim revolutionary movement that is threatening everybody in the region that they can reach. And you would think the Americans would have enough brains to be a status quo power. But the problem is to be a status quo power against the revolutionary Iranians, you'd have to support who? The Saudis and the Gulf states, all run by you know, a monarchical system, not very democratic on top of it. So you have that problem. And then you have the problem with the Neo-Ottomans in Turkey. And the United States just doesn't have either the willingness or the ability to understand what they're dealing with. You know, you've got a neo-Ottomanist uh, threat coming out of Turkey, and most people in Washington don't know what that means. They don't know what the Ottomans were. And then you have this Shia revolutionary movement in Iran, and most of them don't know what the difference between Shia and Sunni uh, are, what the differences are. So it's easy to deal with Turkey because what? Turkey is a member of NATO, which is just, uh, Turkey is nothing more than a wolf in sheep's clothes right now. And then you have Iran, which as I said, was an outpost and a uh, garrison of American neocolonialism. And again, the bottom line is you have original sin in terms of the progressives are concerned, where we overthrew a democratically installed government I mean, kind of like what happened with Allende, okay? Um, except that was much more blatant. Um, and you have this notion of the Shah, the, the subsequent uh, monarchy, acting as the, the bully boy or the sheriff, local sheriff, on behalf of the United States. And then finally, you have this uh, supposed flowering of uh, Shia is a Shia re a revolution, which the progressives like. Why? Because, well, it's a revolution. They don't really necessarily care what kind of revolution it is or, or what it repre actually represents in terms of danger to the region. It's just a revolutionary movement, and that's good. So for all of these reasons, and one more, of course, which might be just as important, which is the United States really doesn't give a damn about anything else going on in the world except a region called the Indo-Pacific. That has to do with China and our apparent inability at the current time to really fight a successful war against China. Every war uh, plan that I've seen publicly um, a contingency plan that I've seen does not end well for the United States. It either ends in defeat or a pyrrhic victory. How, uh, sorry, however, a pyrrhic victory. However, in, it, should, it should be pointed out that the United States has thrown a lot of money at uh, Ukraine, 
in order to continue its its war with with Russia. They've they've thrown a lot of money, but the problem is the amount of supplies has been the delivery has been sporadic at best. So a lot of money has been appropriated. There have been a certain amount of military equipment that has been provided to Ukraine, but not enough to allow them to really push the Rus- this, the Russians out of uh, occupied Ukraine. I mean, this this is you, we we have to understand that the numbers look interesting, but you have to look at the delivery dates, and they're always too late. And the numbers that are required. For example, of artillery shells, are, are mind-boggling. I mean, they're they're reminiscent of the First World War, you know, where you're dealing with thousands and thousands and thousands of shells being fired daily. And when you look at the weekly toll, it's even more extraordinary. So, the United States uh, has allowed its industrial base to deteriorate to the point where it has to go around and ask allies like Japan and other countries to um, provide them. For example, in the case of Japan, the deal was the Japanese provide Patriot missiles to the United States so that the United States can supply their own Patriot missiles to the Ukraine. Well, that can just get you so far. And then you run out of friends. 